you might be wondering why I'm going to spend time on social media and on YouTube and maybe some Facebook live sessions that are open for question and answer to get information out to the rest of the world. And the answer is <clears throat> I'm a very successful breast surgeon. Unfortunately, I have too many patients to treat right now. I am actually trying to find the right partner so that I have more time not just to spend with the patients that I'm taking care of, but to actually help get information in a really palatable, easy to understand, very friendly format out to millions of individuals as opposed to just one at a time. I have been traveling the globe for the past 10 years teaching surgeons how to do state-of-the-art nipple sparing mastectomy techniques. I have been to Russia and India and China educating surgeons in other countries about the not just the techniques of surgery that we do um, and the types of treatments that we offer in the, the United States, but also to talk about healing and to talk about breast cancer prevention and to really help raise the awareness that breast cancer is a disease that has so many factors associated with lifestyle. And I refer to these as the epigenetic factors. We are very familiar with genes. Everybody knows what a gene is. Most people know what a BRCA gene is because of Angelina Jolie. And a genetic predisposition to cancer means that someone has a gene that will, if given the right set of circumstances, eventually create proteins that are going to lead to the formation of cancer. Well, all cancers are genetically based, but most cancers are what we call sporadic, meaning the DNA in the genes is making proteins that are becoming um, part of the person's makeup where those cells lose the ability to know when to die. And the things that we can change are the epigenetic factors, the things like our diet, what we eat, how we stress, what, what do we do for stress reduction? Just this summer, I needed to take a break because my life got really stressful. And I spent three days with Pedram Shojai in Park City, Utah. And I went there not knowing what Qigong really was. I had done Tai Chi in the past, but I needed to take a break from my crazy life to take three days to learn a very, very meditative spiritual practice that gave me a reset that for the next 100 days, every single day I woke up, I started my day with 15 to 30 minutes of Qigong. And Qigong is not for everybody. Neither is yoga, neither is meditation, but everybody needs to find something to help take their cortisol, which are their stress hormone levels, down and get back to a place where you can stay centered and balanced. Because we all have stress in our lives. Everybody has stress in their lives. But it's not the stress that causes the illness. It's how we react to the stress. And if we learn to respond to stress as opposed to react to stress and understand that we have ways to make that process better, we're all gonna be able to live healthier lives. And it's not just about breast cancer. Breast cancer is just one disease. There are so many diseases, depression, anxiety, so many things that have come from our very, very fast paced, kind of, I call it the cattle shoot of middle America. Everyone is flying forward and a lot of them are flying toward retirement. And why not live in the moment? Why not live in the now? We're not guaranteed to get to retirement. So getting back to a place where we learn to live every day to the very best. And I started to write my second book about two years ago. I finished the manuscript, I thought, in March of 2018. And the book is called Shifting Gears. And the reason I wanted to get it done in March of 2018 is that my dad wanted to read the book. Well, my dad turned 91 today, that I, uh, the day that I'm recording this video. And so my dad is still very alive and will probably be here, you know, until the second edition of the book comes out because he is just an amazing man. But the book Shifting Gears is, you know, it's an homage to my dad. My dad taught us to um, try to be present in everything that we do. And when we learned how to drive in our house, you had to learn how to drive a stick shift, hence the term shifting gears. And we would learn how to drive a five speed because if you're driving a car where you have to engage the clutch, put your foot on the gas, 
sometimes slip the gear if you're on a hill and uh, not roll backwards. You know, when you're learning how to drive a car that's a stick shift or a manual transmission, you're actually engaged in the process of being exactly in that moment. And what we've done as a society is become so automated. I go to restaurants um, here in Sedona, and it's sad because I sit next to a table where four people are sitting with their phones in their face, and you can see the light reflected on their face. They're not talking to the people next to them. They're completely disengaged. And so the whole concept of shifting gears is learning how we as a society can shift back to a place where we're re-engaged. Now, I've taken that family of four sitting at dinner, looking at their phones, and I flipped that around. So tomorrow, at five o'clock Sedona time, which is seven o'clock East Coast, my husband and I will be Skype cooking with our sons, Tom and Dean. And so we pop our computers up, so now we're using the technology. We pop the computers up, we all have the same recipe, we are all cooking from the same cookbook, and we make a dinner together. So we're together while we're cooking, we sit down and eat the meal together, we clean up, and then we sign off two or three hours later. So although we're separated by thousands of miles, we're completely connected because we're using the technology to bring us together, not to drive us apart. And social media has been a blessing and curse. For some people, they get so caught up in the social media part, they're not living. Their best friends are on the computer. They're virtual, they're not real. And so for me, I initially thought shifting gears was moving from the East Coast to Sedona, where I could practice more of an integrative aspect of breast cancer care. And what I've actually done is I've kind of created the monster again. I started a practice and now the practice has grown well beyond my capabilities as an individual surgeon to take care of all these patients. So I'm getting another, I need another partner now. I'll probably need a third partner within another year. And that's not a bad thing. It's a good thing because it means I've brought a level of care to my community where I plan to spend the rest of my life um, to a place that people want to come here. They want to stay here for their care. And that's a really good thing. But now it's time for me to shift gears again and say, okay, I've done this. I've gotten a program. I've you know, attained accreditation for a program with the help of so many amazing individuals. We did it as a group. We did it as a team. And now it's time for you know, Team Dupree to say, okay, so how do we help other people around the world get reconnected? And it starts with the reconnection to yourself, the commitment to self-care, the commitment to you know, taking the time to do a massage, taking the time to actually cook, taking the time to understand what nutritional needs your body has, figure out how to sleep better, how to stress less, and come up with ways to manage all of those adversities that we're all gonna come up against in our lives. And so I think that all of my years as a breast cancer surgeon, learning how to help patients through a time of tremendous adversity, a time when their life is turned upside down. I want to take all those gifts that I've learned over those years and now help other people, men, women, children, everybody, to shift their gears and get to a place where they're living an authentic life, where they're getting out in their communities, being involved, making a difference, and being the change that they truly want to be in the world. Thank you.